We used to think of books as a source of reading pleasure, self-development and broadening our horizons and experience. But books, especially the first editions of famous books, are also the entrance to the world of investment and collectioning. I am pretty far from the world of investment and financial literacy, but this point of intersection of the spheres of literature and investment is extremely interesting to me. And today's video is dedicated to the 10 most famous and expensive first editions and why they are so expensive. Hi, I'm Mike Tulpakov and I'll help you to discover great literature and to start reading books productively and consciously. Today I'm talking about the 10 most expensive first editions of famous writers whose books were first printed in the last century and sold at various auction sites for the highest price in the current century. The first editions of famous writers can decorate any book collection and become a good investment. The factors that shape their prices are firstly the circulation, as a rule limited, sometimes several hundred copies. Secondly, the presence of the author's signature on the insides of the cover. Thirdly, the general condition of the book and in fourth, the merits of regalia of the author. Not so long ago, I was sick for a couple of days, slept in a feverish state, when you don't really realize whether you are sleeping or awake. And I dreamed that I was lying in my bed with the first edition of Ulysses. I saw it somewhere, I knew that it looked like, in that monochrome blue-green cover. And I decided to get myself one and decided to google how much it cost, because I thought it might be a good investment. And I found out that the lowest current price for a first edition of Ulysses is $150,000. Wow! Copies of the first edition of the legendary novel Ulysses became a legend among booksellers and collectors in the first half of the 20th century. The fact is explained simply. In 1922, the small Parisian publishing house Shakespeare and Company printed only 100 to 150 copies of the novel on expensive Dutch paper. It's also known that Joyce signed only two copies of the first edition. And on October 2002, just one of these signed books was sold at Christie's auction. The inscription is addressed to the publisher Henry Kaiser and dated October 1922. So it's not surprising that the final cost of the rarity was a record $460,500, with a maximum pre-sale estimate of $300,000. The novel The Sun Also Rises became a kind of milestone in the work of Hemingway. Unfortunately for his publishers, it was just another book by a beginning author. The novel was released in a limited edition by Schreibner's in 1926. The copy was sold at Sotheby in New York on April 2004 for a record $366,400, more than three times the maximum estimated value. This can be explained simply, firstly by the perfect preservation of the book and secondly by the author's signature on the inside of the cover. It was addressed to Dr. Don Carlos Goofy and stretched for as many as 20 lines, so it would be more correct to call it a letter rather than a signature. Kerouac was a key figure among beatniks, and his novel On the Road became a cult classic for the broken generation. Over the past 30 years, only four signed copies of the first edition of the novel, published by Viking Press in 1957, have surfaced at auction sites. At the famous October Christie's auction in New York, one of these books set a price record. Its sale price exceeded the maximum estimated price by more than 2.3 times and amounted to $185,500. The inscription on the inside of the cover is addressed to Kerouac's friends Joyce Johnson. It's interesting that under the dedicated inscription, the writer drew a crooked face, which was just in his style. The Great Gatsby is probably the best literary monument of the jazz age and remains one of the peaks not only of Fitzgerald's work, but of all American literature of the 20th century. Its first edition, published by the New York publishing house Charles Schreibner's Sons, was sold out instantly. 
Not many copies of the first edition in perfect preservation have survived to the day, but from time to time they pop up on various auction sites and set price records. So in June 2007 at Salisbury's in London, one of these books was sold by 84,000 pounds. It's about 167,000 dollars. The first edition is famous for the large number of typos and the dust jacket design, a woman's face on a blue-green background. Faulkner is known as the outstanding novelist and prose writer of the 20th century, but few people know that his very first book was a collection of poetry. The small Boston publishing house Four Seas Company in 1924 printed the marble found with the author's money in a calculation of only 500 copies. The book didn't make a special impression on critics and readers, and the first edition of the marble found was only talked about when Faulkner became an imminent writer. A copy of this collection with a dedication to the author's parents was auctioned off in October 2002 at Christie's New York auction for $95,600. The first United States edition of the legendary dystopia 1984 was published by Harcourt Brace and Company in June 1949, and in January 1950 the writer died. Not surprisingly, the first American edition itself is a collector's edition, and signed copies of 1984 can be counted by the fingers. In December 2012, one of them was sold at Sotheby's in London for £46,850. It's about $75,000. The dedication on the inside of the cover is addressed to the British writer Osbert Sitwell. Presumably, the author signed the book in September 1949, when he was in one of the English hospitals. The Grapes of Wrath is considered one of the best writings about the Great Depression. It was the novel which Steinbeck received the Pulitzer Prize for in 1940, and it was the novel based on which John Ford made a movie that won two Oscars in 1941. The novel was first published in 1939 by the Wiking Press. The book became a bestseller, selling over 430,000 copies in the first year. But the copy sold at the same Christie's New York auction, as the first copies of Ulysses, The Marble Found and On the Road is unique. It is signed by Steinbeck and addressed to the publisher's editor Marshall Best. In July 1997, Bloomsbury, a small London publishing house, took the risk of publishing a book by an unknown writer about the adventures of a young wizard. The circulation of the first edition was only 500 copies, and most of it went straight to school libraries. Only a small number of books fell into the private hands, and they have become the dream of many collectors around the world due to their rarity and investment attractiveness. Exactly 10 years after its publication, one of the copies of the first edition of Harry Potter and Philosopher's Stone was sold at Christie's in London for £19,700, with a maximum estimated value of £12,000. But once these books cost only £5 to £10. Salinger didn't like the way Little Brown and company designed the dust jacket for the first edition of The Catcher in the Rye. He demanded to remove his portrait from its back page, but he didn't succeed. The author request was heeded only in reprints. The first edition books were literally swept off the shelves in the first months after their release and became second-hand rarities during Salinger's lifetime. The most expensive copy was the book, auctioned off in April 2001 at Christie's auction. The sale price exceeded the maximum estimated value by more than four times and amounted to $32,900. It is difficult to imagine how much such a book would have cost if it had been signed by the author. Ray Bradbury became a science fiction classic during his lifetime. Because of the frivolity of the genre he chose, he was never put on the line with Joyce or Hemingway, but it would be foolish to deny the fact that his work had a profound influence on the minds of several generations of readers. Especially the novel Fahrenheit 551 is worth highlighting. 
It was first published by Ballantine's book in 1933 and became an instant bestseller. By themselves, the first editions of the novel are not particularly rare and cost literally a few hundred dollars. However, signed copies, of which there are only 200, are already estimated at thousands. For example, at the London Sotheby auction in July 2010, one of them was sold for £4,000. All these books can be not only the best gift in the life of lovers of literature, but also an incredibly successful investment. True, it is almost impossible to find and acquire something of this level. If you have first editions of any books that are known or important exactly to you, feel free to write about them in the comments. I read and answer all the comments. I hope this video was interesting and informative to you. If so, like and subscribe to the channel, it helps me a lot to develop it. And that's all for today, bye bye, see you soon.